You want filthy, rusted, dirty, orky terrain? This video is for you. Welcome to the bear and the brush. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. I am getting heavily into Kill Team. I really enjoy the game, I enjoy the boxes, I enjoy the terrain pieces. It's a full-on package of a game and I enjoy that immensely. I want to show you guys some effective ways to paint your kill teams and especially to paint your terrain. For every box I'm doing something different with the terrain and for the orc stuff, I love orcs, I went full-on crazy mode. I did everything I know to these terrain pieces. Undershading, oil washes, dry brushes and so many variations that it really pops out, out of the battlefield without taking too much away from the miniatures. I also decided that a paperboard game table is kind of boring, so I grabbed a 22 by 30 plywood thingy, covered it in glue and then just threw everything I have on basing material on there. From grass to sand to whatever and after I finished all that I added tufts and rocks. Of course, you could treat your terrain like a miniature and paint like everything on these pieces. But that would be a total time killer. I mean, the amount of bolts on this thing is like way too much. So I'm going to show you some effective ways using undertones, using oil washes and whatnot to make this terrain really, really great. Starting this piece was pretty easy. I built it. I went outside, took my primer cans, gave it a dark black primer and a nice white denethyl. As I said, both from the spray can. I then went back in after it dried and used my airbrush. A lot of red ink and three different brown tones from the Vallejo Air range gave it a nice varied look to start from. And that is a really solid base. But the fun part starts now. Grab your inks. You can do this with a brush, but I prefer the airbrush. And I grab blue inks, red inks, purple, greens, everything I could find. And just add it to spots and spots and spots all over this miniature to get some really bright popping variation. In. Yep, this was kind of messy and maybe I should have worn gloves, but acrylics get right off your hands, so no problem. You will see the result in a second, nice and varied base coats. But wait till it's dried, it really pops then. Well, I hope you enjoy dry brushing because you're gonna do a lot of dry brushing. Get a huge makeup brush, get a big piece of paper so you can wipe your brush off and get at least three, better, five different colors. Browns, oranges, grays, they all work great. Dip your brush in, wipe most of it off on your piece of paper and then dry brush away. You want to get all those highlights. As you can see here, I am pretty hardcore with my dry brushing. It's not really fine. It really gets a lot of paint onto the models because it is dark already and we will use things that will darken it down again. So be generous with the color in this step. So you varied your undertones and your inks and your dry brush colors all across the terrain pieces and you got a nice varied look. Now we're gonna grab some colors and we paint in the emblems, different parts on the terrain pieces like canisters and rooftop shingles and whatnot, what we can find. Just get some color in, blues, reds, yellows, greens, doesn't matter, do it as you like it. For the extra chipping effect, I like to be really sloppy with this paint job. More a stippling motion, more of a rough paint job than really fine painted details. We're gonna dry brush over that in a minute anyway. Now grab a piece of old sponge and a pair of tweezers. Dip the sponge or the tiny part of the sponge you ripped off 
into some metal paint. I really like silver for this case. Dip it off on a piece of paper and really go into the places where you want the paint to look really chipped off. Scratches and dings from gunfire or just wear and tear. I told you, don't put your dry brushes away, but maybe use a smaller one this time. So for all the stuff, there is still metal behind all that rust and grime. And getting in with a silver, with a bronze, with a copper, on different parts will make it look like there is a lot of material involved and a lot of motion wear and tear on this model. So for example, the textures played up top, they are often walked on, so I dry brushed a silver across it, so it will look like someone walked on it a lot of times. As mentioned before, yes, I'm going to use oil washes, but you don't need oil washes. You can do all this with acrylic washes, you just have to be more intentional and be more careful with the placement because it's hard to remove afterwards. For this kind of job, you want a lot of thin oil washes. So I grabbed four paper cups, a lot of thinner and my trusty Abteilung 502 oils. My favorite oils for washes. Really thin them down and they will work wonders on your terrain. And again, Variety, variety, variety. I got a red, I got a blue, I got a kind of filthy color. It's called Starship Filth, it works amazing. And I got a black brown. So watching me putting oils on for an hour isn't that kind of important, I guess. So I just show you the results. Yep, the oils are still on here. Time to take them away. Yeah, makeup sponges are your best bet here. Just be generous while wiping this off. Go over there, try to grab as much as you can or as little as you want and just remove every bit of oil from the top of the surfaces. You want it to stay in some places and you want it to stay in the deeper parts. To really make this terrain stand out, I can't resist the urge to make some OSL effects. And this is pretty easy on terrain. There are a lot of light sources like light bulbs, for example. Just take your airbrush and some white ink and spray it onto the light source and a bit onto the surrounding area of the light source. To add a really warm light color to all those areas, I use a special mix of white ink, yellow ink, airbrush thinner and Vallejo fluo yellow. It sticks really nice, it doesn't cover everything and it gives such a nice warm light tone like from old gas lamps. So I'm making this terrain looking really old and rusted from the start. But I'm not stopping there. There are so many nice tools like streaking grime, rust, verdigris, all pre-made in little tiny bottles and I can use them as much as I want to. That's the fun part. Just go full on crazy with your build and make it look really, really awky. I really like the Vallejo effect colors for rust. I often just stipple on some of the dark and stipple over some of the fresh rust over it. Also a rough mixture of both really looks great on terrain. This is a real quick and easy step. Dab your brush, I prefer to use a makeup brush again, into your rust color and stipple it all over the terrain. Then Take the next rust color and stipple it in other places and a bit over the darker places you just did before. So yes, I already did the OSL, but I actually don't care. The bright yellow light overshines everything in that area anyway. So it doesn't really matter if there's rust or not. 
I know, I know, I know. Rust and Verdigree don't go together, yada, yada, yada. I really like this effect, okay? <laughs> I like to put Verdigree where stuff could or not could be wet. And it looks good. It's a nice color variation. Pipes and batteries and whatnot all around the train. A massive thank you goes to these guys and everyone on the Discord community. There's a link for the Discord down below. But if you're a patron, goddamn guys, we are moving towards a point where our expenses will be covered. Like all the tax stuff, subscriptions for assets, for hosting and stuff, the software we use for the podcast, it will be covered by you guys and this support means I can't tell you how much it means to me thanks a bunch guys so you thought we were done with the rust right ha fooled you up <laughs> there's a lot of more stuff I want to do and this AK rust streaks are amazing they float everywhere and they kind of dry a bit translucent so everywhere where water would gather um, I try to smear this stuff and it looks amazing when you're done with it. I'm also working on a really quick way to finish these little creek guys, just with some army painter speed paints and a dry brush. If you want to see that, hit me up in the comments. When I said we will be overdoing this terrain like Madman, I meant we will be overdoing this terrain like Madman. So let's grab another tool, shall we? This is Tamiya Panel Liner, and it will do two things for us. First of all, if we put it in some places, like really gently, it will make what it's supposed to do, panel lining. It will give us a nice black line to separate some pieces and make them look more unique. The other thing it will do is it's amazing for leaks and oil spill. If you really slobber this stuff on, it looks like there's oil pooling up, it's drying thick. I love this stuff. And yes, this is an amazing tool to misuse on your terrain and not use it for what's intended to do. You there, you're getting tired. You want to hit the like button and the subscribe button now. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do and you now should know how to make your own really, really orky terrain. And you should know that you shouldn't lick it. Kind of tastes funny. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye bye.